Hello, my friend. It is Teresa here from the Pigeon Letters Design Team again. And I have a little bit of a different from me uh, tutorial. And well, okay. So while I am getting my paper ready, I'm going to just get into it because it's life. Why not? I have been struggling lately in the art world. The life world you know and one of the major things that I've been going through is feeling like the things that I'm creating aren't good enough like I just keep making things and for whatever reason this like enoughness word keeps coming up and it feels so silly because like art is so subjective and when I make a piece of art it can speak to literally anyone and I hope when I make art it is speaking to people but I also need to remember at the end of the day the reason why I started a creativity practice is for self-care and so if the thing that I'm doing for self-care isn't making me feel like I'm enough, I need to take a second. And so I decided that for the next however long, haven't decided how long, um, but I'm just going to put paint on paper and kind of call it a meditative art practice where I have no expectations of what the end product is going to look like. I'm just absorbing what the paintbrush feels like in my hand. I'm playing with the different techniques of wet on wet and wet on dry and just basically playing and giving myself the permission to see what happens. So I wanted to take you along on that journey with me today. Uh, because maybe you're going through something similar. Maybe you just need to clear your mind a little bit. And I don't know, maybe it's just because I can't meditate in the quote unquote traditional sense. Um, but this was and is seeming to be a really nice way for me to shut my brain off and just sort of go with the flow and be really intentional and just watch what happens. Like you can see these colors blending together right now. Just take a second, manipulate it a little bit and watch them flow together. I mean, cool. There's no expectations and we're just gonna breathe and play and let it go. So there's not a whole lot of a tutorial here except for you can see that I am just making different shapes and curves with my brush. I'm pushing colors around and seeing what happens. I'm paying close attention to what feels right. And if something doesn't feel right and it feels a little funky, I'm just telling myself, that that's okay because it is okay it's art I'm also taking a lot of time to just watch the colors and see how they flow when I use them with less water or more water when I add pigment to a certain part of a shape and just trying to go back to the roots of why it's just so fun to watch watercolor do its thing. Now obviously you can use whatever medium you have handy or that you are interested in watching and learning more of. But for me, it's always been watercolor 
because there's just so many different things that you can do with the way that the color moves um, and the way that you apply it and just all of the things. Plus, this is just a really fun opportunity to get to know your brush a little bit. If you are using a brush that you haven't used in a while or you decide that you're finally worth investing in a pigeon letter brush and yes you are worth it because it will literally change your life um, but this is a really great practice to just get to know the capabilities of what your brush can do. So like I said, this is a practice that I have started implementing a lot more in my daily life. And sometimes I fill the whole sheet of paper and sometimes I decide like this time to play with the white space that's already on the paper. So it's completely up to you what you wanna do but the most important thing is to focus on what's in front of you, on the shapes that you're making, the colors that you're building, and don't worry about what the end product is gonna look like because we have no idea what it's gonna look like at this point. And remember, it doesn't matter what it looks like at this point at all because this isn't for anyone i think it's really hard especially for people who turn their their hobbies into careers that you feel like everything that you make has to be this masterpiece that sells instantly as soon as you make it available to someone and that's just not reality so use this opportunity to just play with the lusciousness of your paint. Like, look at the pigment right here. When is the last time you just made a squiggly line with pigment? And then saw what it could turn into. I'm just making lines here. I don't care if the colors are going to bleed together. I kind of want them to, to see what happens. And I mean, it's just sort of freeing. And then just move around to different parts of the paper. Make different shapes. You don't have to think about composition. You don't have to think about color harmony. We're not worried about any of that. If you wanted to challenge yourself and stick to a, a limited color palette or only one color, you could do that. And that would be bring a whole nother element to this meditative practice. But for today's purposes, we're just going with whatever color our heart decides to make and put on the paper. I'm not mixing a ton of colors for this particular piece because I really just want to focus on what it feels like to get the paint down on the paper. And like I said, to see how I can play and manipulate the colors using just water or just letting my brush go however it feels like going. So 
So let your brush do what it wants to do. What is the worst thing that can happen? Why do we always have this fear of creating? Like, whenever I would do art shows pre-COVID, a lot of people would come up to me and say, I could never do this. Or when I'm talking about hosting a workshop, a lot of friends are like, I have no idea how you even do this. And honestly, I can't tell you how because it all started by letting myself play and seeing what happens and giving myself the permission to not be good. And then somewhere along the way, I like, my ego gets in the way and it just... I think too much and I don't know maybe I just let the the voice of good enough and comparison to other creatives stop me from being able to continue my own creation so This practice of letting go and just seeing what the paint sort of does has been really helpful in reminding me that I create first and foremost for me. Then I create because of the joy that it brings others. And it's not selfish that I create for me. And it's not selfish that I ask for time to create. Because it connects me to myself. And it's part of my self-care. And there's value in that. And there's value in providing other people the tools that helped saved me. Help saved me? Help saved? Help providing people the tools that helped saved me. I think that's right. I'm going to let you watch me finish painting. And once you've put all the paint on the paper, This can be your stopping point if you would like, if you would like to continue, or if you want to add another day's practice to your new meditative, creative journey, then keep following along. See, I'm just putting strokes where it feels good, using whatever color feels fun to use. Seeing what it's like to play with the tip of my brush versus the belly of my brush.
All right, so now we're gonna take our painting and we're gonna flip it to a different direction, change your orientation. And we are gonna outline all of our different marks that we made and turn them into whatever we see. So I, of course, try and see flowers wherever I go because that's what makes me happy. And I'm just going to turn these different brush strokes that I made into petals. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the um, rest of it before we go into the third round of details that you can add if you want to. Um, so if you are working on this point and you want to add this as another day or another element to your meditative practice, you can go ahead and pause this video right now and do your outline with your archival pen. And because, well, flower petals are notoriously misshapen and have different forms, we don't have to follow an exact line or thickness. Our lines can be as thick or as thin as we want them to be. Just take one element at a time and outline it however you want until the whole thing is done. And again, you can leave that outline as a final ta-da for your piece, or if you wanted to, can go in with a slightly smaller pen. It can be either the pigeon letter size three or size one pen. That's why I love this pack because it comes with all the different pen sizes that you need, but you can simply just make those small little flower veins to add some movement into petals that you've created. And like I said, this is completely optional, but if you want to add a third day or a third element to your meditative practice, then you can go ahead and do that. Again, zoomed in and showing you what it looks like to add in those little line marks for this red flower right here, but I am going to go ahead and speed up the rest just because I want to make sure to value your time and give you enough space to implement this on your own. Make sure you watch till the end of the video so you can find out how you can share your creation with Peggy and I because self-care and creativity are something that she and I are both so very passionate about 
And my goal in being on this design team truly is to help inspire your creativity the way that Peggy has helped inspire mine because it's transformed my whole entire life. So if this practice is something that you try, I would love to see the results of it. It is something, like I said, that I'm going to be implementing. I don't know if daily, daily sounds a little much, but it's definitely going to be a multi a week thing um and I might even figure out how I can maybe get my little four-year-old to do his own version if his attention span can keep up it probably can't but I can try once and then see but it's so easy to involve other family members in this practice. It doesn't have to take a long time. You can use just paints. You can use just pens. You can use a crayon. Um, I know that Kelly and Leanne have other really great ideas for some mindful creative practices um, to inspire you as well. And so I really hope that you can take the time to, let's just get out of our head a little bit and make something that makes our heart happy. And we know it doesn't have to be this beautiful, perfect final piece. But like, what if it does turn into this beautiful, magical final piece? Because it's feeling pretty magical right now. I don't know. I wasn't feeling very magical when I started, but the colors and the movement and being able to work in sections and just sort of step into the painting and focus on the area that I'm working on, it really does help just shift your mindset a little bit. So you can add lines, you can add circles, you can add any sort of detail that you want inside of these shapes that you've made. It's just truly about whatever feels satisfying to your heart at the moment because you're creating for you you're not creating for anyone else just notice the satisfaction of the ink as it goes over the petals or when you look at one petal and you add the detail then you pull yourself away and you're just like, whoa, I did that and that looks really cool. Yeah, it does. All right. So thank you, friend. Like I said, share, tag Peggy and I. She is obviously at The Pigeon Letters. I am at Teresa Haddo. And I really hope that this helps you get out of a creative rut. I hope it helps you incorporate creativity into your self-care routine. I hope it inspires you to pick up a paintbrush or a pen. All the things. Okay, thanks for making my day better. I hope that I made yours a little better. Okay, that was really cheesy. Okay, bye!